I'm just going to talk about the Holy Ghost a little bit then. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, In Isaiah chapter 11, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his rods. Jesus. <laughs> and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Now you could just take the Spirit of the Lord and just look at every, everywhere. It talks about when the Spirit of the Lord came upon them and the spirit of the lord came upon them and, the, and we could go we could go throughout the whole the old testament and look at where the spirit of the lord came up upon them and i would encourage you to do that the spirit of the lord came upon them and the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding this is what the holy spirit has the spirit of wisdom Look at wisdom and the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the seeing of his eyes, nor the hearing of his ear, or reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove the equity for the meek of the earth and shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and right and the and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom understanding now we can go over into corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we can look at the diversity of the gifts, but yet the same Spirit, the same Spirit. So we know we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and, it, and, it, and it's laid out, the Spirit, the, the sp in, in um, Isaiah chapter 11, the, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of understanding and the fear of the Lord. And we look at that, and this is the power of God resting upon Jesus. So he didn't come and he didn't do anything of himself. Did, did he say that many times? I say nothing of myself. I do nothing of myself. I only say what I hear the Father say. I only do what I hear the Father do. I mean, only do what I hear see the father do that's all he didn't do it of himself because the spirit of the lord was upon him and on the day of pentecost when the day of pentecost is fully come amen let's let, let's just read that for a minute i think we need to soak it in i think we need to soak in what the holy ghost has done we need to take a hold of this what has the holy spirit done for us 
What are we living for? What are we living for? What is your life about? What are we doing with our life? What are we doing with our life? What are we living for? It is so easy to lose focus, it seems, for many people. What are we living for? What are we doing? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with, they, they were all with one accord in one place. We can say whole, a whole lot about one accord. I could, I could stop right there. The one accord, the unity. The unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Keeping the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Key to revival. Key to the move of God. Key to a powerful church. Key to a powerful family. Key to a powerful family. Unity. The unity of the spirit. They were in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came the sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared on them cloven tongues like a fire, and it set upon each of them. Now, I mean, we've read this over and over and over again. At one time, Pastor Mark preached for nearly a year, and every time he started out in, in Acts chapter 2. And I mean, it was every sermon, Acts chapter 2. But we want to take a hold of the Spirit of the Lord that has come to rest upon us. We want to take a hold of this and realize what we have in God. The Holy Spirit of God has come upon us. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire and set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were all, and, and the ones that were dwelling in Jerusalem, and here comes the multitude and the whole, and everybody, and they come around and they see them and they hear them and they think that they're, you know, they've gone nuts. The Spirit of the Lord. As the Spirit of the Lord gave them utterance. He's taken us up over into the realms of heaven with, with the language that goes past the comprehension and the understanding that hooks up with the, with the things of heaven. And he prays through us things that we don't even know what he's speaking, but we just yield ourselves over. And out of this comes, it comes out of this baptism in the Holy Ghost, comes the utterance of prophecy. It comes out of that fellowship coming out of that realm of glory that the Holy Spirit disconnects brain and just flows out of our belly. He said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Rivers. What is a river? Anybody got close to a river that's really flowing? I mean, you know, you can go by a little bit of stream and it's not much noise. But out of your belly would be rivers out of your belly would be rivers. What's the sound of rivers? It's a powerful sound. It's noisy. And when rivers come together, it could be just like Niagara Falls, right? You ever get around Niagara Falls? You'd have to yell to talk to each other. The closer you get up to the, the spring, you're, you're trying to, I mean, up to the, the fall of, of, of that mighty conversion, you're a pouring forth of that Niagara Falls, you, you can't hear anything but the water. Out of your belly will come rivers of living water, not a little trickle. He promised us rivers. He promised us rivers because the rivers are powerful, because it hooks up with heaven. If we only allow a trickle and we only stay in a little piece or a part, or we don't count it so dear to ourselves, we can't be the river. We won't be a river. It won't be in us if we don't allow it. We have to allow the Holy Ghost to take us over. We have to give ourselves to allowing him to take us over. To be rivers of living water. 
I think Father wants to hear the rivers of living water coming up out of every one of us. He wants us coming in here together, filled up and flowing in the realm. See, this is the body right here. It begins. This is the beginning. And out of this, when the Holy Ghost is moving on everyone in the place and you see the glory on everybody, and then it boom, 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 boom. It starts to function as the body. The body begins to function. It begins to move together out of the rivers of the Holy Ghost. Not out of what we thought with our mind. You know, because any good Baptist or Presbyterian preacher can go and study out a sermon or he can go on the internet and copy somebody else's. And, you know, anybody can do it and get up and, you know, as far as people that have gifts to be able to speak and they, you know, they're good orators and they can say their little sermon and make everybody happy and put in a few little jokes and try to smooth it all over and everybody leaves feeling great about themselves. But we're not interested in that. We're interested in what the Holy Ghost is doing. What is the Holy Spirit doing? And it's rivers. He said, if anybody's thirsty, is anybody thirsty? If anybody's thirsty, let him come unto me and out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. This is the church that Jesus established by the Holy Ghost, Father established by the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. This was the birth of the church. And tongues of fire set on each one of them, and they all spake with diverse tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And everybody has something to say and to criticize and try to hide away and put it back and it's not allowed and, you know, let's get it all in order. They take just a little part of Scripture in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and, and, and they just try to cut everything out with no understanding. You know why? God allowed that. God allowed those things to be put in there to see if people would study out the word and line it up and put it all together. And it's just like, you know, the women aren't allowed to, to speak in church. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we can look at that. It says, it, it's a shame for women to speak in church. Well, I better go sit down, right? If they would learn anything, let them ask their husbands when they're home. If they would learn anything, I don't see any, let them ask their husbands at home. It's talking about if they would learn anything. But no, people, it's a shame for women to speak in church. Well, if right here it says, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So what does the woman do? Go prophesy in her closet and shut the door? So, you know, people won't line the scripture up. They won't look at it and put it all together and understand what it's saying. They take a little thing and go, She's speaking in tongues. They're speaking in tongues. They speak in tongues over there. And everything's supposed to be de decently in order. And somebody's supposed to... Blah, blah, blah. And Paul says, I pray in tongues more than you all. And he didn't say anything about when you're having a prayer meeting. He didn't say anything, you know, about... It, it says, and forbid not to speak in tongues. <laughs> so it sums it all up with, okay, they got caught up with the rivers. They got caught up, and they come together, and there was explosion. And so Paul is like, okay, I understand. I understand what's going on. But we've got the unlearned coming in here. And so we've got to, we've got to get a hold of ourselves for a moment here and let the Holy Spirit speak. Speak through us in, in words that can be understood. It's time to come over here a minute and speak in words that can be understood. So you can, be, you can be raptured in the glory and speak in words that can be understood. But he didn't say, stop. But we will say that the majority of the church says, 
You're not supposed to do that. And then when the church starts coming to get, comes together and everybody starts praying in tongues, you feel a resistance. And, and the sad thing is, is I feel it here. You know, and I, I, I don't know where it's coming from, but people get into the thinking mode. They need to get into the one accord mode. If you just get so hooked up in the one accord mode and realize maybe you don't know the scriptures all lined up. Maybe you never, some people in this place probably didn't even comprehend, you know, look at the scripture of women aren't supposed to speak in church, <laughs> say anything. And some people probably looked at it and went, oh, well, Pastor Geneva speaks in church, so it must be okay. Uh, and, you know, and then a few of them went, you know, how about Deborah the prophetess? How about Helda the prophetess? How about, you know, and how about all of, all of these things? And how about where it says that the women should prophesy? And how about to the elect lady? And, and, you know, and put it all together, line the word of God up, and then look and see what it's meaning. But people just take a little bit. And they run with it, and the worst thing that they take is not we are free from sin, that we're set free from the powers of darkness. Shall we continue in sin? God forbid. And, and you know, that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and, and, and he that loves me keeps my commandments. And, and, and they don't take those scriptures, but they take, it's got to be done decently in order. And instead of having two or three speaking tongues and then the others prophesying the church, they just shove it all out the door because it wasn't done decently in order. And we want to push through that. There's a pushing through of that. There's a pushing through with everything that we are and everything that we do in the spirit. There's a pushing through the resistance. And when you feel the resistance, you don't want to just go, well, I'm not feeling it tonight. I'm not feeling it this morning. You know, people are like, I, I, want, I want to have a greater prayer life. Yeah. I'm like, fight. Yeah. It's a good fight of faith. Yeah. Lay hold. Yeah. <laughs> Lay hold on salvation. You've got to fight. Because I tell you, when you get down on your knees and you get to, you get to praying, everything suddenly needs to be done. Something needs to be fixed. The phone won't ring until you're down there. Whatever emergencies just going here there and yon it happens but are you going to take that are you going to fight crystal go to the organ i mean go up there and play organ piano whatever you got go play you've got to fight the good fight of faith hallelujah thank you jesus you've got to fight against tiredness you've got to fight against busyness You've got to lay hold over into the realms of glory, into the realms of his presence. You've got to look and say, he said, if any man's thirsty. Oh, God, am I thirsty? Father, am I thirsty? Because you said if we were thirsty, out of our belly would flow rivers. God, has rivers flowing out of me. Lord, I want more. Lord, I want more. I want the rivers of living water to flow out of me. And, that, and then they flow, and then the Holy Ghost begins to use me, and the glory of God begins to be seen in me and through me. I'm not just existing in this life and existing in this world to make it another day, to, 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 to get through this life. Turn it down, Crystal. To get through this life, I'm not just existing. With my plan. But I'm here for the rivers of living water to come gushing up out of me. For the glory of God to be revealed in me and through me. In everything that I do, in everything that I am, rivers of living water. Oh, Jesus, 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 if any man is thirsty, let him come unto me. And all heaven will flow out, will flow out where there's rivers of living water gushing out. Heaven's flowing out. Heaven is flowing out. Heaven is feeding 
and giving to drink and salting a needy world. And when heaven's coming out of us, that's what's happening. We're giving somebody a drink of water. We're giving somebody some bread of life. We're giving somebody some salt and making them salty so they'll get thirsty, that they'll get desperate. We run into so many backslidden Christians, so many backslidden people that once went to some church. I don't know that they ever had a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Some maybe did. But we got to resalt them. We've got to resalt them because we live in a day that so many people are deceived and allured away from the things of God. And they get in deception through self-justifying one big reason is because the church doesn't preach the gospel that we are a separate people that we're to come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and I will receive you that gospel is not preached that gospel of being free that gospel of knowing that we are in him and he is in us his spirit is in us what unity what better unity can you get can you, can, can you ever comprehend in John 17 where he said, Oh, Father, that they may be one. As we are one, I and you and you and me, that they may be in us. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. In the Father and in the Son, one. One with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit revealing the reality of the person, Jesus, and the reality of the Father. Who they are. And how they think. That isn't running about over here trying to find out what kind of mess you can get in. And how to excuse what you want to do. That's going up into the realms of heaven and knowing the righteous, holy one, the mighty one. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Rivers. Rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Even a Pentecostal church can dry up if we're not continually focused on our first love and what he has done for us and these rivers of living water that flow out of us, the Spirit. Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? That the Spirit of God dwells in you? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, 17, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives and dwells in us. You know the reality of that. Wake up. Wake up and arise to the occasion that the Almighty, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all things, lives on the inside of us. We've not received Romans chapter 8, as we were talking about the other night, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. We've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear or to come under a place of fear, or to come under doubt and unbelief, or to come under the things of this life, or to come under the things of this world. But we receive the spirit of sonship where we might cry, Dad, Abba Father, Daddy God, my, my Dad, my Dad, my Father, my God who is in heaven, my God. Ownership, ownership. You got that ownership. When it's dad, there's that confidence with dad. You know, I know my son David, he has that confidence with dad, whatever dad has. Is, you know, especially when he was living at home, even after he was married. Whatever dad had, it was his. David needed money, David could sell things. He's able to sell things. And so he sold just about everything his dad had <laughs> that he could get his hands on. That ownership. That confidence, it's dad's, he's not using it. I can sell it. He needed money. But there was that, that confidence in that relationship. And I tell you what, his dad loved him so much, he'd just go looking for what he was 
supposed to happen, it wouldn't be there. Oh, David sold it. And I, he never said a word. Because of that, that fellowship, that relationship, do we see Father like that? Do we see that confidence and that boldness that we come before him because we've got that geyser coming out of us and we're so connected because the, the rivers are gushing forth. Oh, see, when he speaks, it's like the sound of many waters. And who's in us? So when he speaks through us, it can be the sounds of many waters if we're not so busy about this life that we're not just a little bit of a trickle. And so somebody comes over and, the, and, and they need something and they're trying to turn the faucet on and there's just a little bit of a drip, drip, drip coming out because we've been busy about whatever and they're supposed to be able to come over and it just come a geyser up out of that, out of that river and they just can drink, they can drink of what the Holy Ghost is saying through you. Not anything that we can prepare in our mind. We can hide the word in our hearts and be prepared because we're in that fellowship and that relationship with God and we're hiding that word in our heart. But somebody comes over and they have a need. They have a need and they just touch us and it explodes out of us. And then we're speaking things that they're just like, they just told me everything. They told me who I was and what I was doing and how I, why, why I came here. So when they come into your midst, they fall down because the secrets of their hearts are revealed. That's the flowing, that Holy Ghost flowing. And, and Father's crying for his people. He's bidding, he's bidding for his people to come. Do you know how much Father loves you? Do you know how much he wants to have that fellowship and relationship with you? He wants you to go back there in the barn and get his stuff. And, and give it out. Not sell it, but give it. He wants you to believe that you can take possession of it. He wants that fellowship, that communion. He wants you to realize that. If there's people in here that didn't have a father that really loved them, forget about it. Just forget about it because I'm telling you now, Father is the Father to the fatherless. And let the Holy Ghost reveal. Let the Holy Ghost reveal the Father to you. If you had a father that tried to do good, well, thank you, Jesus. But Father, he's there for you. He's there for you. And no man on earth can compare unless he's a geyser of heaven flowing out. It's about living and walking and dwelling in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys can get excited. Yeah. I don't have to be the only one. I, I, I personally can't help it when, when I'm ministering in the anointing. And the Holy Spirit is speaking things through me. It, I can't contain it. it. It's like it's too much for me. It's explosive. And I, I'll sit right over here and Pastor Mark could be talking about the things of the Holy Ghost. And it, it's explosive to me. It's explosive to me. It's glorious to me. Oh, hallelujah. So I can't emotion. I can't somebody brush cut it. I'm scared. Balling in your cool mama in the air. Bush shell. I'm in a little man. Can't call it a machine. I can't chop up a brush to do. I can't in a mo. Nearly a mo. Who is killing you? Can't do a sada. I tell her. Oh, the machine. The machine. Can't do a sada. Can't do so. So I mean, ah. Uh, Hallelujah. If people have to get up and run around, it's okay with me. So, me and the Korishin and my Borosunin and I'm a clear robber at it. Oh, I get a tie, it's a tie, it's all. The Ayin Suba in the Kilinish Kuta. It's okay with me if you touch heaven. It's okay with me if you say, I'm putting, I'm putting everything aside. 
I'm putting everything inside. I want heaven. I want the realms of glory. I want the realms of his presence. I don't want to be distracted. I, distracted. I don't want distractions that would keep me from what Father has purposed for me to do. All the destiny, all the purpose, all the plan. If we would just hook up with what he wants us to do. He's saying, come. Come unto me. He's saying, come and feast and dine. Come and dine. He's speaking, come and dine. He's saying, come and dine at his table. He's saying, come and dine for all of us. You know, I believe that, I believe that most people in this church, they're doing things in the kingdom. They're doing things in God. And you're pressing in and, and doing more. But I'm going to tell you, we haven't even begun. We haven't even begun. The glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory, the glory that he wants to reveal to us. Of his fullness we have already received. And grace for grace. And he wants it to explode on the inside of us. And us to explode it out. <laughs> With all boldness and authority. Authority, speak out of the rivers of the Holy Ghost. The purpose and the plan that he has for you. It's not just what you're doing. It's not just what you're doing. You may be doing that now. You may be doing that for now. But it's not just what you're doing. It's so much more. It's so much more. It's so much more. And the way in to that place is the rivers flowing up out of you. It's the rivers of the Holy Ghost flowing up out of you. Rivers, mighty rivers flowing up out of you. And when we come together, it is a, it's an awesome time to hook up with that glory, with that river. Really, every one of us should be bringing in such a, such a river that when it can ver comes together, <laughs> converses, <laughs> when it comes together, when it comes together, when it comes together, there's just the explosion of sound of heaven, the sound of heaven, the sound of heaven, and then the body's moving, functioning, moving, functioning. <laughs> oh, me teclear, paros todo. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. The glory of heaven. The glory of heaven. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And the functioning, the functioning of all of that. Whew, Jesus. And then out of that, and then out of that, we're moving in God. We're doing things in God. There's rivers flowing. And suddenly, there's miracles. There's people getting saved. There's all kinds of supernatural things that we cannot do happening. There's breakthrough in every aspect. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory and honor. Oh, precious Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for the glory. The glory of your presence. The glory of your presence in this place, oh God. Your glory, Lord. Your glory, Lord. The glory of your presence. We want the word to go forth into ground that is plowed up, that can receive the word and it become living in life. We don't want wor the word going to your intellect and getting stopped there. See, this word is spirit and it's life. 
but you have to be hooked up with the realm of the Spirit to receive by the Spirit for it to be living, for it to produce fruit. The only way it can produce fruit is if it's a living, a living word on the inside of you. I've known so many people, they could quote so many scriptures and they had such an intellect of the word of God and their fruit of their life was iniquity. They knew the word. They could quote it, but it was right here. They could quote scripture after scripture. They probably could memorize more scripture than I did. And it's all right here because the fruit of their life was iniquity. The fruit of their life was not the fruits of the Spirit manifested and working in them and through them. The Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. And this is how we know that we're in the Spirit. Because there's divided to every one of us. There's divided to every one of us gifts as the Spirit. As the Spirit wills, He divides them to every one of us. And yet, there's something greater. Because though I speak with tongues of men and, men and of angels, and though I prophesy and understand all, if I have not charity, if love does not flow from me, I am nothing. I am nothing. I am nothing. You can have all of these things. Isn't that amazing? People can even have, they can have a knowledge, they can tap in. But if they don't have the love of God, because what did Jesus do? He moved out of compassion. Because where does that love come? Where did he get that compassion? Where do we get that compassion? Where do we get that love to flow like Jesus did? It's given to us by the Holy Spirit. The love of God, Romans 5, 5, shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Love by the Holy Ghost. Let's look at, at, at 1 John chapter 4. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Spirit. Realizing this, the Holy Spirit, this is, look at this. Soak this in by the Spirit. Soak the word in by the Spirit, not by intellect, but by the Spirit. We, you know, we live in a city of such intellect. Intellectualism will absolutely stop the Holy Ghost from functioning. I don't care how good, and, and Father doesn't care how good of a sermon you can put together or how good of anything that you can do. He doesn't, he doesn't care about your ability. He's called you to flow in His ability. If Jesus, if that's what he did, then who do we think we are to do it out of our head? People don't know the difference. Sorry to say the church doesn't know the difference because we send our kids off to school to train them, to have them trained, to study, to learn, to take a hold of it. And do we give that much time with our children that they're flowing in the Holy Ghost? That, that, that they know how to flow in the Holy Ghost, that, that the study of, uh, of the academics of the, uh, of the earth and the things that we deem so important become a, a side part to just help us function in the Holy Ghost, to know the things of the Spirit. Do you know how school was started in this nation? Can anybody answer that question? That's a hard one. It was started to teach people how to read the Word of God so they could read it for themselves. Do you know that when kids graduated, you know when kids graduated from, from high school at the age of 12 and 13 years old, they graduated high school and went into college, went into you know, Harvard or Oxford or any of these colleges. Do you know what they went in to learn? The first thing that they did in the United States, as far as Harvard goes, you know what they did? They translated the Word of God from English to the Greek and the Hebrew. And then back from the Greek and the Hebrew, back to English. The Word of God had preeminence in this country. And now man is caught up in education and knowledge of this earth, the earthly realm, the earthly sphere. 
and not the realm of the Holy Spirit, not the realm of glory, not the realm of his presence, not the realm of entering in. And so we have a church full of people that it's intellectualism all day long. It's how to use their ability. Maybe everybody in this room that has an occupation that you've trained yourself to do should go and do something that you didn't train yourself to do at all that you didn't learn anything about so you can go and do that and have to do it by the Holy Ghost to be able to <laughs> earn your bread. <laughs> do something that you, you know, and, and that's my husband. People ask him, say, can you do this? And he goes, yes, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, Lord, show me how to do it because I have <laughs> no idea what I'm doing. And he started that out. When he started out, he wanted to quit what he was doing um, in the union, and he wanted to have his own business. And first he was going to be a mechanic, didn't like the grease all over his hands, and he didn't train to be a mechanic. He would just pray and get in there because he had a Holy Ghost man teaching him how to do whatever he wanted to do. My dad, my dad, he'd get in there and he'd pray over it. And like Pastor Mark said, you know, they'd say, you know, they said it was impossible to fix this car. Well, so they sold it to him really cheap. And, Dad wasn't telling him how to fix it before he bought it. And so after he bought it, he fixed it in just a couple of minutes. And then Mark had a car for a real good price because um, he, he followed the Holy Ghost. My mom did it a little bit different. She'd take the bottle, oil, and the hammer. <laughs> and she'd go out and she'd lift the hit hood to the car because Dad was somewhere preaching the gospel. And, you know, he went home very much. He was an evangelist, and when your kids are in school, mom stays home with, you know, five, six kids, whatever. So mom would go out with a bottle of oil and anoint everything <laughs> and praying over it. And then she'd take the hammer and hit everything <laughs> and pray over it and then slam the hood and get in and shut the, uh, start the car. And it worked, and I watched her do it. But she was there, and she didn't have the finances to go call the mechanic. And she didn't even think about that. She thought about, you pray and you ask God. And so we were raised this way. And we need the church to be raised this way. Amen. You know, Jesus said to Peter, when they said, Peter, do you, does your master give tribute to Caesar? And then Peter says, yes. And then Peter goes, in, into the place where Jesus was and Jesus stood in front of him and wouldn't let him in, prevented him to come in and said, Peter, has a little conversation about does the son, do, do the children pay, pay tribute or the servants? And Peter says the servants. And he says, well, unless we offend them, go fishing. The first fish that comes out, take out the money and go pay our taxes for me and you. It's going to be enough exactly what we need to pay our taxes. We need this. We need to follow the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We need to be listening about what the Holy Spirit's saying. We need our lives to be about that. We need to change things up. Everybody switch from this side of the room to this side of the room, this side of the room. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not serious. <laughs> but I am. There's got to be a change. There's got to be something that takes us out of our ability and causes us to realize that it's his ability. Yeah, yeah. It is not our ability. And only are we going to fulfill what God's called us to do if we hook up with what he is doing. Yeah, yeah. If we look, hook up with the Holy Ghost and fire Amen. moving in us. How many of us honestly, honestly are aware every day of not saying anything unless we hear the Father say it? How many of us honestly are aware of not doing anything unless we see the Father do it? How many of us are really Holy Ghost people that we're giving ourselves over to the Holy Spirit to move and work on the inside of us and use us? And it's not anything that we, please, don't go into the realm of oh me. Because that is never going to hook you up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is challenging us to hear him. 
to just be still. Because we live in a very busy world. A very busy world that captivates our time and captivates our mind and keeps us busy and there's too much stuff. I was thinking the other night, I'm like, we need to just rip all the, the television and the electronics and all of the busy stuff and everything away from our children, away from our family. Away from us. All of us. And go back about 150 years where there's none of it. None of the stuff to do. And be still before the Lord. Be still before his presence. Be in his presence. The explosion that the people in this place just right here tonight could be in San Diego, California. If we would allow the Holy Ghost to use us. If we would allow the Holy Spirit to take over and put aside, put aside all of our stuff and all of our busyness and all of our intellect and all of our education and all of our Things that we have to accomplish and yield ourselves over to the realms of his glory and the realms of his presence. You, you look, you look at, at men like the one in, in North Korea. Um, say his name, David. Ch uh, Cho? Chung? Cho. Youngi Cho. Cho. And it, he, he had a totally miserably failed church nothing was happening and then he decided to pray and spend time in prayer and it's not just the pastor you know can we each and every one of us trust God to provide for us to take care of us that we can spend time in prayer and he decided to spend time in prayer pretty soon he was praying five hours a day and it wasn't because he didn't have anything else that he could do. It's because he made himself available and he wasn't going to do anything else. Because it was failure. He had failure. Our only success is what we do in the Holy Spirit. Only, the only treasures that we have in, on this earth or in heaven are what we do in the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, in the realms of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven has come unto us. The kingdom of heaven is here. We're supposed to be making up the kingdom of heaven by doing what the Holy Ghost is doing. And sometimes it's not, it's not even being busy in ministry. It's not lining up another counseling session or another this or doing that or doing, you know taking care of, uh, of church business. Sometimes it's just putting it all aside and being still and refusing to be moved and saying, no, I will be in his presence. I'm not going to overcommit to where I don't have prayer time. And I mean, first of all, to overcommit to the foolishness. I mean, I'd rather be doing things in the kingdom with my time than, you know, something that, you know, if I'm not praying or seeking the Lord, something that is meaningless. Not to say that Father doesn't, you know, want us to have a good time because he created everything for his pleasure. It was created for his pleasure. And he wants us to enjoy that. But he wants us to enjoy it in the Holy Ghost. He has a purpose in everything that we do. He has a plan for us to be the river of the Holy Ghost flowing out and functioning by the Spirit. And it all begins with love, the compassions of God that move us, not human compassion. Human compassion will mess you up. It will have you pulled this way, that way. You will see all kinds of stuff that you can just waste the rest of your life in in human compassion. That's one thing that I love about Phil Smithers. 
is because he's like, we didn't come to build you a house, bring you tents, bring you clothing, bring you shoes. We came to give you the gift of the creator that will be the provision for all that you have need of. That's what we bring. That's what we bring. That's the gospel that we bring. That's what we're coming with. We're coming with hope eternal for you. We can get so busy with the stuff. It takes us right out. And that, and, and that is trying to turn from your intellect and doing what you're doing to over to ministry and then get wrapped up in human compassion and all the stuff that Jesus had. He didn't do any of it. When he needed some food, he wasn't going and rounding it up. He just said, where's, where's, what, how much food you guys got? Bring it here. Father, I thank you. <laughs> and he just begins to break it. And he breaks so much of it and then just begins to multiply. And then it just goes and it feeds the 5,000. And greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. And what was it about him going to the Father? He said, I, it is expedient for you that I go, that the Holy Ghost come. So he can show you how to do all of this. So he can show you how to do this. He can show you how to do exactly <laughs> what the Father is doing. Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for the Holy Ghost. So over here, here, we'll just start in verse 2. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist whereof ye have heard. Of the spirit of okay, I wanted to go on down. You, you, verse four. You are the child. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is He that is in you than He that is He that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world hear, heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Very important to hear that, spirit of truth. We, we want to be hearing the Father through the spirit to know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error because the spirit of error will come to us and speak. Psst, God has not said. Psst, God has not said. You will not really die. It's important that we're following the Holy Ghost because deception is right there, right there at the door. When I will tell you, I haven't even got to the verses I want to. But I will tell you that so many people sit in the church hanging on to something, some ungodly thing that they, you know, wrestle with and say they're trying to overcome. And, and I, I believe that they want to overcome. But at the same time, you have to realize that God gives us all power to overcome. And it's simply, you know, if you're having a battle, fast and pray. Separate yourself. You know, that's something that I honor Billy Graham about. One of the greatest things in that man's life is that he, he took away all the distractions. And he said, look, nobody in this ministry is going to get caught with any of these things going on in your life. You're going to put them aside. You're never going to allow yourself to be in these situations. And he laid them all out, and you can go look them up. But... Um, you know, like he, he went into a hotel room, and when he would come into the hotel room, he would tell them, take the TV out of the room before I get there because I don't want the news. I don't want to be tempted to turn on the news. I don't want any distractions. I've got to focus on what God's given me to do. I want no distractions. And, you know, one hotel he went to, they said, we can't take the TV out because, you know, we just don't do that. And he says, no, just take it out. Whatever the cost is, I'll pay it. It doesn't matter. Just take it out. So he gets there, and they didn't take the TV out. So he gets up, and he yanks it out of the wall and throws it out of the room because he meant it. He didn't go, oh, well, because he knew that it could be a temptation that he did not want to even have in front of him. So he just yanked it out of the wall and put it out of the room. And they took care of the bill. He paid for everything. 
He was responsible for it and did it in, in love, but did it in sincerity that he was separating himself. And people hang on to these things and they play with these little things here and there again. There's a, there's a door. There's a door that they allow it for it to come in and to come in and to come in. And I will tell you, it will take you down and it will bring you into a person that you never even dreamed that you would be. It will bring such destruction in your life. You do not want to mess with it. You want to be done with it. You want to cry out to God and say whatever it takes. Because that little fox will spoil the entire vine. When it's a baby, it may look cute in some way or have some kind of pleasurous thing, but it will destroy. It will destroy. It's a destroyer. And the enemy isn't coming after you with some alluring thing that he's going to allow it to be just little simple always in your life. It will get bigger and the deception will get bigger and, the, and, and you will not even realize it because there will be so much deception, self-justification, and it will go into the fact that you have the reason for and why, and it will put the blame on everybody else. See, that's justifi self-justification. The blame gets put on everybody else, and you are the one that has the reason, and you're justified to be the situation you are, and so blinded to what you're doing that when in reality before that time you would have never been that person that you become because you allowed the enemy to play somewhere in your life. The enemy wants to kill you. He wants to destroy your soul and how for eternity. He is not fr a friend, people. Don't mess over there. I mean, seriously, if the enemy comes out against you and whatever it takes, I mean, get the knife out and just go, if this is what it takes for me to get it, I tell you what, you'll get close to start sawing on your finger or whatever, and you'll go, I think, I, I think, I, I think I'm getting this. You could think about plucking your eye and getting something ready to go into your eye and pluck it completely out. You'll go, you know what, I think I can remove everything that would be the distraction. I think I, think I, I, think I figured this out. I think I'll just take this out. You know, I'll go break this up. Shh, shh. I'd rather bust this up instead of plucking out my eye because I'm not going to get it back. And then it'll be a reality for you to connect to flowing in the Holy Ghost because I'm going to tell you the Holy Ghost will show you the Father. He will not show you the things of this world. He will not show you the things of this life. He will not show you the things of the demonic realm. He will not lead you there. The Holy Ghost is in his church to show us the Father, not the world. So you simply, you hook up with the Holy Spirit, and you're not distracted. You're not deceived. You don't come under the deception. You don't come under the self-justification. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are of God. We are of God. He that knoweth God hears us. He that is not of God hears us not. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. See, and right in there, that self-preservation, when somebody brings something that could hurt or offend you and then self-preservation goes and speaks something to belittle that person to soothe this is such a demonic realm to try to soothe you and justify you in your state because they see but love doesn't do that love doesn't do that Love is humble, it's broken, and it says, yeah, you're better than I am. Yeah, thank you. You know, and, and love learns to take everything that this world dishes out. It's, Father, what are you doing in me? Father, what are you working in my spirit? Lord, I humble myself before you, Father, because I only want you. Before honor comes humility. Before honor comes humility. And when we humble ourselves before the Lord, he can honor us because we're listening to the Holy Spirit. We're not looking about what anybody's trying, you know, what people 
or we're not even looking at what the enemy's doing because we're so busy about, Father, what are you working in my life? What are you doing in me? I want to take that, mold me, fashion me, fix me, change me, make me like you, Lord. That's love. That's love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might through that we might live through him. Did we deserve it? Did we deserve Jesus coming and dying for us to bring us into reconciliation with the Father? We did not deserve it, but this is love. This is love. Laying down our life even when it stinking hurts and it's so painful and it's so wrong. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. Jesus could have said that. It's so wrong for them to abuse me. Don't they know I created them? <coughs> it's so wrong for them to throw all this stuff in my teeth and speak all of these things. It's so wrong for them to yank out my beard and slap my face. But he wasn't even close to thinking about that. His thought was, <laughs> for you <laughs> and so he's on the cross looking at those that beat him and were brutal to him and nailed him to that cross and he's you know and even the Pharisees that were standing there witnessing the death because they were going to make sure he was dead he said father forgive them for they know not what they do the love of God the love of God Oh, and how much he loves us. Here in his love, not that we love God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the perpetuation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. If we take a hold of this, this is revival, this is knowing, you know, and we have this. We have the love of God in us. It's us letting it out all the time and choosing So. What, what, did, what did Jesus do? He chose the good and refused the evil. The evil came out against him all the time. He had to choose. Even though he was God, he had to choose. He chose, and he taught us how to choose by the Spirit. By the Spirit. So we choose the love when it should be hate. We choose to lay down our life, to die, to allow ourselves to be walked on, spat on, cursed, Whatever, because our in turn was the love that God had for us. We must give. We're compelled. We're compelled by that compassion and by that love. Compelled. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one, also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Father, that they may be one in us as I'm in you and you're in me, that they may be in us. If the love of God dwells in us. And how, again, we have the love of God by the Holy Ghost. It's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So how? By us yielding to what he has done, this perfect work. This perf it's, a, it's a complete surrendering of ourselves to the Holy Spirit. And the only way to live it and walk it out is out of your bellies shall flow rivers of living water in case anyone was going to sleep. <laughs> Out of your belly, out of your belly flows this river. There's a geyser and it can't be stopped. It has to be love because there's a river flowing because you're caught up in the realms of heaven and in heaven there's love because that's what God's doing. He's doing love. That's the number one thing he's doing is love above all things. And then when everything that we do flows out of that love of God because we're raptured over into that realm of his glory and his love then it's not sounding brass and tinkling cymbals it's the glory of heaven manifested upon this earth when we speak in tongues and when we prophesy and when and when we have words of knowledge and wisdom and and, and when miracles and, and and every gift of faith moving mountains it's powerful because it's coming from the throne of heaven. 
when it's the compassions of heaven. Oh, people, we have such glory to trade some, such emptiness for, such riches to trade our empty paper bags for. And somehow we're busy about this life and we haven't made the full trade. We want to simply surrender over to the realms of the Holy Ghost and let it be a geyser flowing <laughs> out of us. Oh, Jesus. Hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit, his Holy Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we know and we have known and believe the love we know and we believe. So nobody wants to be over in, I'm not worthy. Because, yeah, no, you're not. But, but the love of God. And so you dwell in the love of God. And it's not anything that anyone's worthy of. It's a free gift that we all receive. And realizing that even when we're on the place of rejecting God, backslidden in our sins, God loves us so much that he'll send somebody to try to shake us out of the rut that we're in. Somebody to love us in the mess that we're in because God loves us so much that he continually wants to bring us back into that fellowship and that relationship. And how much more his saints, how much more his saints. But the enemy would try to keep holding something there for you to keep you outside of the realms of the Holy Ghost and moving in the realms of the Holy Ghost and saying that you can't have it in some way or you're not worthy or you've made too many mistakes or you've done this or you've done that. You want to get your eyes off of you and your eyes on Jesus so he can just flow out of you. Forget about what you have done. That's the whole thing. Forget about you and let the rivers of living water flow out of you. Get thirsty. Because who was he talking to? He was talking to a woman that had five husbands. And now the one she was living with was not her husband. She was not the prime candidate that we would go and pick and tell her that out of her belly would flow rivers of living water. Is she? Because she knew better. What did she do? She started talking about our father Abraham. And he said, and she knew about the Messiah coming, and she knew about the things of the kingdom, and she knew about that there was a way to live right and a way to live wrong. She knew what she was doing was evil and wicked. But she was the one that Jesus said, uh-huh. And the Father said, over there, she's going to be thirsty. She's sick of herself. Amen. That's the key. Sick of me. I want him in me. I want his ability. I want all the blessings of heaven to flow out of heaven and not out of anything that I can do or my ability. I want it to flow out of the realms of glory. I want it to be a divine impartation, a, a divine visitation, a divine uh, provision. I want it all to come out of heaven. I don't want anything in this earthly realm. I don't want anything to distract me. The realms of heaven, the realms of his glory. The realms of his presence. Oh, God. Ooh. I about preached myself to the altar. <laughs> Could I read 16 again? And we have known and believed the love that God hath for us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwells in God and God in him. This is how to measure yourself with the things of the Spirit. Am I living and dwelling in love? Am I laying down my life? Am I being a servant? Is the Holy Spirit moving in me? Is that river of living water flowing out of me? Is love flowing out of me? Then that means that God dwells in me. And I dwell in him. And the prayer of Jesus is answered. That's a powerful prayer when Jesus prays. All heaven, all heaven and earth have to get out of the way. Everything has to move to answer that prayer. Everything has to move. And he prayed that for us. 
because of his love. And that's his continual prayer for us before the Father, that we come into that place of fellowship and that place of relationship and that place of love that the Father can dwell in us completely, that we will not have any of our snotty, bratty self. Because really, we don't like it when other people display it, and they don't like it when we display it. And nobody likes any of it, so why have it? But how many love the realms of love and the realms of glory and the realms of goodness and the realms of mercy and the realms of kindness? So why don't we just live it? Why don't we let him live it through us? Why? Do we let anything distract us from this realm? Maybe we should, we, we should just be in church for the next seven days and not leave. Or something, whatever it takes for us to get over into this realm. Let's forget about these things that are so stinking important that they would keep us out of the realms of heaven. <sighs> Father. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. Because as he is, where is he at right now? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's in the midst of his church. He's pouring out his love going, receive, 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 receive. And as he is, so are we. In this world, as he is. And it all comes through us just going, I'll receive, Lord. I will not be distracted. I will not be denied. We got people in here that persevere to accomplish what they've got to get done. To persevere. When there's something that's got to be done in the kingdom and it's, it's things that have to be done, I'll shut everything down and I'll go for it and get it done. I'll push it through. <laughs> I want to push through, through things in the realms of spirit more than I push through anything in the realm. Of course, I, I want to do all of those things by the realms of the spirit, but I want to so persistent in the things of the kingdom. So determined at where I'm at that I allow God to use me. Oh, what glory he can bring on his behalf through us if we will only allow it. If we will only allow him to work in us continually if we will only allow him. There is no fear in love. There's no doubt, there's no unbelief, there's no, there's no discouragement, there's no hopelessness, there's no, you know, that's all fear. There's no pride. There's no excuses. There's no self-preservation, protecting yourself. People don't even realize the wall of self-preservation that we all build really high. I know that wall. I know that wall very well because I was raised in a, in a minister's home, in a preacher's home, and everybody was after my dad. And there was continually all this stuff going out against him and all the, you know, just craziness. And then the people that I thought were my friends were bleeding me for information to try to go use it against my dad to take his ministry away from him because their father was coveting the ministry that my dad had established by the father and they wanted to come in and take it so they were bringing division all through it and these people were what I thought was my best friends. And so, one thing after another through your life of living that out, I had a wall so high that people were not going to get close to me. That was it, never again. People, mm -mm. you know, I love Jesus. And I love people, but they stay on that side of the wall 
and I'll be on this side of the wall. And they're not getting close. Because, you know, people, people look at those people in the ministry as though they're not people. It's just like people look at Pastor Mark's kids as they're not people. They're not, they don't grow up and mature and learn things. Only your kids grow up and mature and learn things. <laughs> but they're on the platform, so they can't grow and mature and learn things. Mm -mm, nope, they're supposed to know it. They're supposed to come out the first day they're born, having it all downloaded, and they're not supposed to go through anything, even though Jesus did. He was tried in all things. They can't be tried. Nope. Nope. They, you know, they're just, you know. But that's how people are to people in the ministry. I lived that. I walked it out. And so everybody's got their thing, you know. And so here I am, a preacher's daughter, a Christian, working in the ministry, still working in the ministry. But I have my wall built. And boy, I'm sure there was a lot of people judging me then. Because they went, I don't, I don't know, nobody close. Nobody close. You stay out there, I'll stay in here. Hi, I love you. <laughs> people in here have walls built to protect yourself. But when all of that pride and arrogancy and hurt and discouragement, when we let it come down and we just go, here I am, Father. Here I am. It doesn't matter if they spit at me and they throw all these things in my teeth. It doesn't matter. They can say what they want to say. People will accuse you of things that they, you know, that they think that possibly happened and they don't even ever come to you and ask you if it happened. They just, you know, heard that somehow maybe you were in the area or whatever and then you were the bad person and you did all this wrong stuff and they don't ever come to you and ask you but they'll tell everybody else about it. Who cares? Who cares? You don't know what goes on until you get in there and you work it out. You might have a whole bunch of assumptions, but you're over on the wrong side because the accuser of the brethren is the devil. <laughs> so I wouldn't hook up with him. Accuse nobody. I don't care if they just got saved or were born supposedly saved and knew it all. Whatever people want to think. It doesn't matter because our life is not our own. And when we do that, when we let down all the walls, God can really begin to use us. And we can step over into that place of relationship with him to where it's all about him. It's all about lo the love of God. The love of God flowing in us and through us that loves people that will get up close. I mean, you may not have time to be best friends with everybody. I mean, nobody, who, who does? Who can have a whole lot of, you know, real close friends? It's just, you know, it's challenging to be able to have time to pray and be in the Word and, you know, counsel people and run a, run a church and, you know, just try to get a hello said to everybody, you know. Jesus wants to be your best friend anyway. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say that I love, I love God and he hates his brother, he's a liar. So understanding, let me, just, let me just say this. If you have an accusation against someone, you're speaking out words that defame them, then that's not love. So what is the opposite of love? Very good. And so, yeah, somebody does something that you don't think is right and you have a problem with it, you know, just let that whole thing come down. Just go to them and just go, can we work this out? You know, here's, here's some stuff and, you know, I mean, it might be all just pumped up in your head and you imagine the whole thing. And most of the time it is. And then, again, the fact is, is everybody's growing in grace. And everybody's learning things of God. And by you going to them, they may realize some things in their spirit that, you know, that they need to surrender more to the, to the Father. And you might realize that a lot of your assumptions were wrong, too. 
And you know what? Love works no ill to its neighbor. neighbor. It works no ill, so it fulfills the law. So if you're so full of, when you're so full of the love of God, you, can't, you almost can't find an accusation with somebody. You, just, you can't, because when you love them like you love you, you just want to go over there and help them. <laughs> How can I help you? Not blah, 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 to fix all of your problem, to try to make your situation worked out. Just deal with it. I, there's so many times I wish people would just come to me, just come to me and say something, and we could fix, we could, we could work this out. But you know, when people come to you, don't get in self-defense either. Thank them first thing. That's love. Don't have put up that wall of pride that has to argue with people. If you argue, you need to just you need to just fast and pray till that arguing spirit's broken. Especially when somebody in leadership says something to you, you should not argue. And if you do that, just don't go, don't eat for 40 days. <laughs> Until that thing can be broken. I mean, take your salvation that serious. Lay hold on salvation. Fight to lay hold on salvation. Because you don't want to have thought that you did it all right. And you had this little deceiving demon living around here your whole life, and you were in strife and envy and all of this wickedness. Now, you could see that the sins of the Nicolaitans were bad. You can see that the Sodomites, man, they messing up. You, you can call out all those sins, and you're real good about calling everybody else's sins out. You can see them real clearly. But yours, they're all packaged up around you, and you're so fat with them, you can't see nothing. So you just want, you want to recognize for yourself. Humility receives correction. Read the Proverbs that, just to start with and then go read everything Jesus said. And allow humble humility to have its work in you so you can be in the realms of the Holy Spirit. Pride will keep you from going to someone if you need to get something worked out. And I'll tell you, for the most part, love covers it all. Love just covers it. It covers it. It covers it. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, because you love one another. And what did Jesus say before that? He said, yet a new commandment I write unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. How many has loved someone else like Jesus loved us. Anyone. Anyone else like Jesus loved us. And yet, the Holy Ghost has put that love in our heart and all we have to do is yield to it. So what needs to get out of the way? So we need to rise up every morning, deny ourselves, and follow Jesus and do what he's doing. Do what he's doing. And what is he doing? Love. That should have been loud. <laughs> Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father is doing love. Or else they could have just moved on. We could have been wiped out a long time ago. And they could have moved on. Father could do something else. But he loves. He loves. He loves. And he's continually doing all of this goodness and all of this love and all of this mercy to bring us to him. Even when we know who he is and we're not living it, we're backslidden. He's there just with that hope and that believing that you will hear. And he keeps sending it. He keeps, he keeps speaking and he keeps having Pastor Mark stay right here in San Diego and pound the thing out. Because that's love. That's love. Whew, Jesus. And this, and this commandment, and I'm, I, yeah, I'm reading it all. 
Beca and there's a whole lot more. I don't think I'm going past over here in First John, but I mean, we could, we could stay here all night just talking about this one subject because God is love. And we need to realize that we're in him and he's in us and that we walk even as he walks. We need to realize that that's who we are and that we're representing him to the world. We're his representation. Man, if I was him, I wouldn't pick me. I wouldn't pick some of us. I wouldn't pick me. You know? Because if I'm looking for somebody to represent me, I want to fix them up. Right? That's how we are. I just thought of something funny, and I'm not going to say that. And his commandment, and this commandment have we from him, that he who loves God loves his brother also. So if you love God, see, if you say you love your brother, you love God and you hate your brother, you're a liar and the truth's not in you. Because how can you love God whom you have seen and hate your brother whom you have not? If you can... If you can't love God whom you've not seen. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll say it right in a minute. But um, anyway, if we can't love the Father, if we can't love our brother whom we have seen, then we can't love the Father. We don't. We don't. We're kidding ourselves. I don't want anybody to be discouraged. This is charge because we're valiant. And we're pushing through. And, you know, it's just realization time. That we ain't going to talk about people. We ain't going to have attitudes about people. And we're going to serve. And especially serve anybody that the enemy would try to put a grinding thought in our mind that they're not quite as good as we are. Oh, we would never say that. No, but that's what we think. Because that's how we're acting. We're better than them if we're saying something against them. We're going to be the servants. If I, then being your master, wash your feet, how much more shall you serve one another? Not fighting about who's going to be first. Serve one another. And I'm going on. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and we keep his commandments. And then here goes the message. Now we're ready to really get into the meat because we keep his commandments. This is how we know that we're in him and that we love God. Jesus said, he that loves me keeps my commandments. Because why? Why? Because it's easy. Because out of our belly is flowing a river of living water that hooks up where the Holy Ghost is showing us the Father. And all we can see when we stand before the Father is His love and His goodness. And our, our inability to receive such glorious love and goodness. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father, for your love that you've given us. And I thank you, Father, for a church that is thirsty and hungry. Wow. Thirsty and hungry for the love of God to flow through them and in them. Thirsty and hungry for the rivers of living water to flow out of us. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit, Lord, we just want to give ourselves yielded over to you. Father, forgive us, everyone, for being busy with stuff. And God, cause us, Lord Jesus, to set our priorities in order before you through the Holy Ghost. Have Holy Ghost priorities, not self-serving or man-serving or man-pleasing. 
our life-pleasing, our agenda-pleasing priorities. But Father, we set our priorities through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit helps us to walk it out and we yield to Him. I will tell you, if you will ask the Holy Spirit to set your priorities and you mean it and you'll be obedient to Him, He will help you to accomplish staying over in this realm all the time. He will. He will help you to accomplish being a person of prayer, being a person where the rivers of living water flow out of you and accomplish all the things that you need to do on this earth. Because there's practical things that we need to do. I mean, the Bible, it, it, it does say on the other side, if a man does not work, neither should he eat. But it doesn't say that, it, it doesn't mean that we do that outside of the realms of the Holy Spirit. It means that we allow the Holy Spirit to set the order of the day. And when he's speaking, he makes the time, and we go get alone with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We flow in the Holy Ghost all the time so we can hear and we can do. Father, I thank you for a Holy Ghost church. I thank you for a Pentecostal day experienced Holy Ghost church, Father. Lord Jesus, we want Pentecostal Holy Ghost experience. The day of Pentecost all the time, all the time. We want to live and dwell in your presence. Everybody just stand with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you for the glory of heaven. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the glory of heaven. We thank you, Father, for the reign of love. <laughs> love, 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 love. <laughs> Flowing, overflowing in the realms of your glory. Oh, praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Anybody in the place want prayer for any reason? There's two or three gathered here in his name. And here he is, and whatever your need is, he is going to meet it. If you need to be healed, if you need whatever you need, God is going to meet your need. He's here to meet your need. Thank you, Lord Jesus.